hello welcome to this video in tonight's video we're going to consider how we can create and invoke azure event trigger in azure data pipeline to initiate pipeline runs automatically based on blob creation in the azure storage account let's get started if you're new to this channel or you've not subscribed please click on the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon to be notified of new videos let's see how we can create this project from the ground to the top I'm currently in the Azure portal. So the first thing I want to do is to create what is called containers in the Azure storage account. So I'm going to come to this fabric shortcut 101 storage account tag. And then I want to create under the data storage containers. So in the containers, I've got this fabric container. So click on container. So I'm going to call this one source and then click create. I want to create another one called the destination. So click on that. I'm going to call this one destination and then click on create. So basically, we want to ingest a single file into the source. So I'm going to click on that and then I can upload a single file from my local laptop. I'm going to click on browse and then I'm going to choose this file. So transact in 2016, double click and then I can click on upload. That's going to be automatically uploaded into the source container. Next, we want to create Azure Data Factory. So I'm going to right click and duplicate this tab. I'm going to go to the portal home and I want to come to my ADLS resource. So in the resource, I can go on to click on this create at the top. And then in the marketplace, I'm going to search for the Azure Data Factory and then press enter to search. So we're going to see Data Factory. So click on that. And then I want to go ahead and click on create. In the create under the basics tab, I can of course choose my subscription and then my resource group. So this is automatically populated for me. So I'm going to give this a name. Let me just call it Abiola101. And then I can click on review plus create. So this is going to be validated and then I can click on create. My Azure Data Factory is now created. So I can click on go to resource and then I can see Abiola101 Data Factory resource so we want to go ahead and launch the adf studio so click on the launch so after we launch that we want to create what's called link service for the source and destination and we're going to go ahead and create data set for the source and the link service so i'm currently in the azure data factory i'm going to click on this to expand and then i can see i've got the home the auto monitor manage now let's start off in the manage tab so click on that so when i click on that i can see under the connections i can create link service to my source and my destination so i can go ahead and click on this nail to create a link service so basically this is going to be my azure blog storage account so click on that and click on continue and then i can give this a meaningful name let me just call this one source azure blob storage and then i can go on and specify my subscription which is the visual studio enterprise and then for my storage account name it's going to be fabric shortcut 101 exactly what we have here and then i can scroll down so this is going to be test connection to linked service and then i can click on text connection and it's going to be tested and a condition be working fine so connection successful click on create Okay, so we have the source Azure blog storage account in created. So I need one more link service to the destination. So I can click on the new and then I want to use the same Azure blog storage and then click on continue. So I can go on and just modify the name. I'm just call this one destination and then I can get rid of this one. And I want to scroll down again. I'm going to choose my subscription, the Visual Studio Enterprise, and then for the storage account name, it's going to be the same Fabric Shortcode 101 storage account. And then we have the text connection to linked service. So click on test connection. Again, this should be working fine. So click on create. So we've created our two linked service. So we'll go ahead and create data set for the source and the link service. So I'm going to come to the auto. Under the auto, I can see the data set under the factory resource. So I can click on this ellipsis and then I can choose data set. Now I'm going to love to create folder. So I'm going to create a folder for the source. I'm going to call this one source and then click on create so i need one more folder now this is not compulsory but i just love to create folder so this is going to be destination and then click on create so for my source i'm going to click on the ellipsis and then i can choose new data sets so this is going to be azure blog storage account and then click on continue 
And of course, my format is going to be comma separated value. So click on the CSV and then click on continue. I can just modify it. I'm just going to call this one source delimited text. And then for the linked service, I can choose the source Azure blob and then I can provide the file path. I'm going to click on this browse so I can connect to the source root folder. So double click on that and then I can see the transaction 2016.csv. I'm going to copy that for now and then I can click OK. So that's been sorted. Now, first row, I said that's going to be used automatically. Now, for the import schema, I'm going to just choose none. I don't want to import schema and then click OK. So we can see we have the source delimited text. And then for the destination, I'm going to go ahead and click on the ellipses and I want to choose new data set. Again, Azure blob storage account, click on continue, text delimited, click on continue. And then I'm going to just call this one destination delimited text and then for the link service i'm going to choose the destination azure blob storage and then i'm going to go ahead and provide the file path so click on this to browse and i'm going to choose the destination container and then double click on that so this is going to be empty for now of course we don't have anything in the destination so click ok so that's been sorted again i don't want to import the schema and then go ahead and click okay so we have the destination and the source now the next thing i want to do is to parameterize the source and the destination data set using file name parameter which will be used in the data pipeline copy activity so for this i'm going to come to the source first so in the source i'm going to come to the parameters and then i'm going to click on the new and i'm going to just call this on file name I'm going to come to the connection and uh, the connection for the file path. I'm going to click on this and use add dynamic content. So I'm going to say under the parameter tabs, I've got the file name, click on that. And then we have the data set function and then we have the property, the file name. So click OK. So that's done. And then I can do the same thing for the destination. So for the destination, I'm going to go ahead and create the parameters and then click on the new. I'm going to call this one file name also and come to the connection and I can close this for now. And for the file name, add dynamic content. I can see the file name parameters, click on that, and then click OK. So that's been sorted. So we have authorized the source and the destination data sets. So I'm going to come over to the pipeline and click on the ellipses, and I want to add a new pipeline. So for this, I just need the move and transform data activity. So that's going to be in the canvas. I can collapse this for now. I can even collapse this for now. Okay, I can even minimize this for now. Okay, so I'm going to give this a meaningful name. Let's just call it data transfer. And then for the source, I'm going to come to the source. And for the source data set, this is going to be source delimited text. And then I can go on and specify the file name. So for the file name, I'm just going to go ahead and control the what I copied earlier, the transaction2016.cz file. So this is going to be ad coded for now, no worries. And then I can come to the same, the destination. So I'm going to choose the destination telling the text. And of course, I'm going to use the same transaction2016.csv. So that is done for now. So I can go on and publish the artifact of the pipeline. So click on the publish all. And then I can see I've got a pipeline and then the two data set, the source and the destination. So click on published. This has been published. And then what I'm going to do is to go ahead and click on validate. So I'm going to check no errors whatsoever, close, and then I can click on debug. So when I click on debug, this is going to go ahead and orchestrate the data from the source to the destination as a block storage account. Okay, activity status succeeded. So this is working fine. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to right click to duplicate the tab. So it's going to be the source. I'm going to go ahead and open the destination container. So I'm going to go ahead and come to the home tab, click on the fabric shortcut 101 storage account i can come to the containers and then i can click on the destination and voila we have the data working so we can see the time it was transferred at 23 32 so i can see the same time 23 31 so this is working fine and for we can see the access tier the alt inferred brilliant so we have the data transferred from the source to the destination which is cool i want to make sure that when a new data set comes into the source it's going to automatically come into the destination by firing the trigger I'm going to invoke in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and come back to my ADF, the Azure Data Factory. So for the Azure Data Factory, I'm going to go ahead and click on this in space. So we want to create a file name parameter to be used for the source and the sync to access the file name 
in the data pipeline. So I'm going to come in, not on this um, copy activity, just click on empty space in the canvas and then come to the parameters. And in the parameters, we're going to create a new one. And then I'm just going to call this one file name and then go ahead and click outside. So once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click on the copy data activity. And then I'm going to come to the source. In the source, I can get rid of this at coded transaction2016.csv. And then I can add dynamic content. I'm going to see the file name parameter I just defined. Click on that. And then we have the parameter function. And then we have the property. And then click OK. So that's now dynamic, which is cool, not at coded. I'm going to come to the sync. Again, I'm going to get rid of these and use the add dynamic content. I'm going to add the same file name and then click OK. So we can go on and publish all. So published, completed. So I'm going to come to the add trigger and that's the main focus of this video. So again, I can choose the trigger now, but I want to actually create new trigger or edit. So when I click on that, I'm going to click on this drop down to choose the trigger. So click on the new and then I can specify the trigger name. I'm going to go with this default trigger one and uh, I can choose the type now the type is very important we have four major type of triggers we have the schedule tumbling window storage event and custom events so I want to focus on the storage event so click on that and then I can choose my Azure subscription and then I'm going to go ahead and choose my storage account name the fabric shortcut 101 and then for the container name this is going to be the source container because this will evoke the trigger so I can scroll down now for the block path begins with block path and with that this are optional arguments we need to do anything so for the event now it's going to be blob creation so we're going to click on blob created not deleted and then for this this is going to be ignored automatically any empty blobs so i'm going to scroll down and then we have the start trigger this is going to be starting immediately on creation and then click on continue so as soon as i click on continue i'm going to see this next window everything looks good click on continue so in the new trigger so we can go on and specify the trigger run parameters so we have the file name and then the type is string and then for the value we'll paste this what i copied it so this was called our trigger body function and then we're accessing the property so i can click on okay where i click on publish so publishing completed so which is cool so we have the trigger in place now i can go to the source storage account and then i want to add or upload a new file for 2017 so click on upload and then i'm going to use the browse and i'm going to go back a bit and i want to add this transaction 2017 and of course this must also be a comma separated value csv file so double click and then i can click on the upload that's going to be uploaded into the source container so we can go on to the Azure Data Factory. So when I come to the Azure Data Factory, I can come to the Monitor tab, I can expand this. So as soon as I click on the Monitor tab, I can see under the trigger, we have the pipeline one that's running. So what I can do, I can just go ahead and click on Refresh. So I'm gonna wait for the status to be successful. So we can say succeeded, which is amazing. So we can see the run time, the run end, duration 18 seconds triggered by blah 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 we can also scroll to the right side and then we can see the run id and so on so this is done now i can go to the destination storage account and i should be able to see the 2017 transaction data so i'm going to come here and then i can refresh as soon as i refresh amazing we have the transaction 2017 and then we can see the time 23 37 exactly almost the same time. So we can see this is working fine. This is how we can use the event trigger in Azure Data Pipeline to invoke moving data from one storage account to another storage account. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and make sure you subscribe to this channel for more content. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.